Good evening, everyone. I hope you and your family are staying healthy and safe as the public health crisis surrounding the COVID virus continues to evolve. And like I say every time, we will all uh, emerge out of this much stronger and uh, adapt to the new normal. My name is Seema Menon, and I'm the director and COO at CFO Collective, the organization that owns the CFO India brand, a leading media platform focused at engaging the CFO community in India. So while we're all navigating this current lockdown, CFO India continues to bring you cutting edge insights on best practices, practical measures and actions that help you lead the finance function in these disruptive times through a series of virtual panel interactions. So thank you very much for joining today's webinar. The context for today's webinar is around uh, the imminent growth of the economy. So like they say, growth will once again become the focus of businesses, perhaps in just two quarters or three. But for now, the COVID-19 pandemic has ensured a decisive shift in priority from growth to strengthening of balance sheets. So even when we had done a very quick dipstick survey amongst CFOs, the main thing that was emerging in the conversation was that people are looking at conserving or optimizing costs and also directing it in areas that require it the most. So unprecedented focus on cost control and cash conservation is uh, what is high on the CFO's priority. Defensive strategies such as cutting costs, increasing cash flow and reducing leverage pave the way to the new normal in a post-pandemic future. In such a scenario, intelligent approach to spend management is critical for companies to survive and thrive. So in today's webinar, our panel of experts will talk about the business value of intelligent spend management and how finance leaders can use it to steer their company as the COVID-19 situation unfolds. This is also keeping in mind that they are future ready. So when the demand picks up, they are ready to service and their businesses are agile as well. So I'm delighted to welcome our experts on this panel. Vivek Ganesh, who's the Regional Sales Director from SAP Kankar India, will kickstart the discussions. And then we will have a panel interaction with uh, Shyam Dev Mukherjee, who's the Vice President Planning and Control United Breweries, Manish Singhvi, who's the CFO of Mar Labs, Vishal Maheshwari, who's the Group CFO Healthier MedTech, and Om Prakash, who's the Global Delivery Director, Cloud Solutions at Blueprint Technologies. So before I get started, I wanted to make a quick housekeeping announcement. So here we will run a couple of polls. So uh, the slide that you see here is how it will appear during when we run these polls. So you have about uh, 30 seconds to respond to the poll. So we'll have about two polls to start off with. This is basically to gauge your sentiment and then we will move along into the discussion. Please feel free to type in your questions as well. So type them into the Q&A window and I will take the questions up right after the interaction so that, you know, we don't disrupt the flow of the session. So before we get started, let's start with our first poll. So like I said, uh, you know, this is going to be live for about 30 seconds. So please key in your responses quickly. Okay, so we'll have uh, Vivek comment on this once he starts his presentation. But I think broadly, everybody uh, or at least 57% of the CFOs uh, talk about improving process efficiency as one of their top priorities for their organization in this year. And I think it also resonates with some of the research that we had done around this area. So I'll quickly move on to the second poll. Okay, so this one says, what is your potential concern about intelligence spend management approach? So quickly key in your responses, please. Okay, so I think here again, Vivek can take it up during his presentation. Okay, so without any further delay, may I request uh, Vivek Ganesh to walk us through what is an integrated spend management and what are some of the benefits that it offers? First of all, thank you CFO India and thank you Seema for uh, you know getting us on this with partnership. Definitely looking forward to the panel discussion. And before that, we probably thought it would be a great opportunity for us to talk from SAP and SAP Conquer. What do we think about this entire resetting your spending strategy means to the CFOs and to the Indian enterprises. So what next? It's great to start a conversation, a discussion when we start talking about what's next. 
and that's the question everyone everyone's asking the future is not what we thought it would have been a few months ago we've all changed the way we operate during this pandemic some changes were forced on us and others definitely represent the highest amount of innovations that happen during a crisis and that's where a reset of workforce work itself started and the difference and the reset of employer and employee relationship started additionally there is a lot being said about how the role of finance office is going to get reinvented the role of office of finance is used is is used probably being an intelligence provider for the organization through reporting analyzing risk and making predictions the finance function will now need to drive the change and reinvent, reinvent itself it will be the key designer and owner of navigating the new norm so when we talk about the stages of respond recover and then renew a more stable new normal environment moves enterprises into the renew phase and once the chaotic environment of the recover phase settles down enterprises will experience the real new normal that we keep talking about the future starts to become more planable at this particular point of time societies start to normalize international trade relationships will resume will get better and that will definitely evolve into new global trade patterns and this is when enterprises can accelerate their plans to renew themselves so when we look at the cfo pulse survey done by pwc uh, you know they were talking about multiple aspects of the current cfo priorities so with economies opening up reopening and we once we move to the renew stage consumer sentiments start to pick up and that's when cfos will have to shift their focus to rebuilding the top line in an uncertain environment a challenge that takes time and work so 32% of the cfos globally are very confident in their company's ability to identify new revenue opportunities new avenues for potential growth the majority of cfos however 72% believe they will be more resilient more agile in the long run and 53% say new ways that they are serving customers will be the reason that will put them in a better position down the road so here we're talking about how to reset so even before we start talking about what are we going to reset let's probably look at how to reset and and there are definitely three aspects to it the first one is creating efficiencies and even defining the new normal putting up the benchmark in terms of what is that significant improvement in employee productivity how can i master data and analytics both predictive and cognitive and how can i build a self service model where i am less reliant on external factors and then the point number 2 which is strategy right so progressive finance teams cfos will have a strategy to redesign and automate the entire fpna process to shift their focus from transactional to strategic and robotics and machine learning where workers looking to save time will kick in the demand for artificial intelligence into overdrive in fact more than half around 58% of companies expect robotic processes rpa to have a significant impact in their financial planning and fpna process over the next 2 years point number 3 finally talking about agility i think that's pro- probably one of the most sought after topics for it leaders and finance leaders technology will make it possible to simplify things for example using a mobile to take pictures of the receipts and invoices and complete the request on their laptops or mobile devices through an app maybe that will speed up the process for the employee simplifying things for your approvers and and simplifying the entire approval workflow making it easier for your organization to track these unexpected expenditures so now let's talk about what are the areas of resetting so now that we spoke about how do we reset and now let's talk about what are the areas that we need to look at resetting undoubtedly the need of the r is immediate cash flow and liquidity management with the right technology you can understand cash requirements in seconds and instantly trigger necessary actions within your organization within specific cost centers and therefore have effective management of cash cycle with real time visibility the second piece talking about visibility visibility will matter the most transparency will matter the most in the new normal which means procurement spend is the largest expenditure for all product centric businesses but often mismanaged in many organizations where the spend is across multiple categories the spend is across multiple countries multiple units multiple vendors and this disparate view of data prevents you from making the real time well informed decisions 
So once you have an inter- integrated view, or we call it as a single source of truth, you would be able to reallocate budgets to priority areas where you want to ensure that adequate funds are available to ensure that corporate goals and improving the budget planning and compliance happens. Talking about compliance, coming to the third point is your cost control and compliance. And control help definitely will be the biggest lever when it comes to business continuity. Once you have captured and integrated spend data into greater visibility, then you have you are able to focus on establishing the right controls, right policies from a spend management standpoint. So it, it becomes extremely critical for making it as easy as possible for the employees to use and comply with the policies and at the same time making it convenient for the finance team to audit and ensure that the compliance is happening. As we consider the scale of change addressing all these three challenges we spoke about cash flow, visibility and control, we will definitely offer the financial leaders a clear path to begin navigating to this new normal, a normal that looks unlike any in the years preceding the coronavirus. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, Vivek, for sort of setting the context so appropriately. And I'm deeply delighted to welcome our other panelists for interaction. We have with us Shemdev Mukherjee, uh, who's the Vice President Planning and Control for UB Group. We have Manish Singhvi, who's the CFO for Marlabs. And uh, we have uh, Vishal Maheshwari, the Group CFO for Healthy and MedTech. And we have Om Prakash H, who's the Director from Blueprint technologies joining us today. So thank you so much. And uh, I think uh, in the panel, we have um, CFOs representing different industry verticals. So uh, I'm sure the conversation and the discussion will get richer because uh, we will have each of them talk to us about how the uh, pandemic has sort of impacted their businesses. What are some of the measures that they are undertaking? and uh, holistically hope to uh, arrive at a, you know at some sort of knowledge that our CFOs can take back. So I'll get started with you, uh, Shaimdev. The first question that I have for you is, you know, there have been tremendous amount of learnings that this pandemic has thrown up for organizations. And it has also thrown out some of, uh, you know, the forecasting uh, or the other methods that were traditionally employed in organizations because, you know, we're dealing with an uncertain uncertainty in that in that sense. So what are some of the best practices that a company needs to adopt in order to optimize spending during these uncertain times? And this is primarily to minimize the downturn's impact on business. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, and thanks, Seema, for asking me this question. In fact, while going through the presentation of Vivek, it was appearing to me that you are uh, preaching to the converted. Uh, first of all, I would like to <laughs> Thank SAP. Uh, just to give you a practical example, uh, 31st March closing uh, for most corporates. We know all of us, it was a nightmare. And uh, one of the things which we did uh, is uh, uh, the process which Vivek was talking about that take the vendor invoices uh, and uh, mail it and scan it, etc, uh, etc. Et so we actually did that. And that's how we could close the books when most of the offices were closed and people were not able to make it to the offices. Now, that's on the technology side. Uh, while uh, we've not, uh, it, it, uh, it was uh, innovation born out of a necessity. So not we have not really evaluated that process improvement, how much it will uh, lead to reduction of costs. But uh, I'm sure we'll get there as we go along. The other thing about talking about technology and I'll stick to, uh, in the context of this webinar, I will only refer to those initiatives which are driven by technology and cost reductions. Uh, I'm sure all corporates, just not us, are doing a lot of things in a lot of spheres to reduce costs. But uh, in the interest of time and in the context of this cinema, I will just restrict it to technology. The other thing which I wanted to share is uh, where we have again implemented technology is to improve our line efficiency. Uh, as most of you know, we manufacture beer and uh, if a line is at 36,000 BPH, which means bottles per hour is running at 28,000, no prizes for guessing that additional cost. The cost of technology is actually quite high for process improvement. Just to share with you some numbers, about 2 crores per line and we have 20 odd breweries in the country with multiple lines. So you can Imagine the uh, type of investment, but the good part of the good news is uh, what when we did the financial evaluation, we saw that if it is implemented well, we would recover the costs in a 
less than six months time which is i think fantastic and fabulous so uh, going back to where i started we will look at primarily reducing cost because most industries are looking at reduction in volumes on which you have very little or no control increasing prices is not an option because already the market is pretty stressed so i'm not very sure whether consumers will be willing to pay the extra price for your products and more so for an industry like us where uh, the costs anyway go up for little or no intervention on our sides uh, we've seen a, a from 70% covid cess in delhi to later on better sense prevail they have brought it down so uh, rising uh, prices is not an option so the only thing which we can do is cut down our costs to improve our bottom line and the i think that technology would be a important lever to drive that initiative uh manish i want to go uh, back to you uh, and and ask you uh, saying that you know you represent a a, a vertical uh, which is uh, more or less largely impacted uh, because of the covid and plus um, you know trump doing his rigmarole in the us and things like that so tell us a little bit about managing variable spending you know so there has to be spends that are made but you know what are some of the steps that you take to be able to control this without hampering on the company's ability to do business and be agile uh thanks ima good afternoon everyone um, i'm hoping every one of you are doing well and along with your family members uh, these challenging times um so sima you know i think a very valid question right you know the everyday morning when we get up that's that's something which you know we keep hearing and we keep planning for the same right you know so yeah. all of the cfos are in thick of our actions you know it's a challenging times and uh, while you know we have to ensure our organizations you know are ready to take uh, any kind of business shocks right because you never know right you know in the one day morning you know one of our client can file for a bankruptcy and uh, the business gets impacted right it's it's very different in us right because we represent an it industry and most of our customers are in us so what happens is in this case is while we have to ensure that you know our business can take the uh, the business shocks at the same time you know this is not an end of the world right we have to plan you know for stabilizing the company for the near future and we have to create right opportunities for the for the growth which is you know going to get arise from this pandemic right because because you know every pandemic will give rise to a lot of other opportunities right so i think this is the way we are looking at it you know while cost optimization cost cutting is very very important but at the same time what we are looking at it is you know how do we ensure that you know we put the costs into the right area right you know so while we manage the profitability you know uh, with the help of you know excellent technology which you use on our financial and budgeting thing and you know gone are those days when you know we used to do the budgeting and planning you know once in a month or once in a quarter you know i am seeing we are doing literally on a daily basis right and uh, you know basis on those uh, you know parameters which are being thrown by our uh, you know our fpna functions uh, what we do is you know we take some some calls some of them are like how do we move the uh, the planned budget into something which is required to be done now you know take examples which we have done is like we have taken you know a call on freezing on hiring right you know we are not going to hire until and unless we we believe that uh, you know this particular position is is must and is it's 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 required for you know for our billing uh, what we have done is we have got lot of people on the bench and you know it's not good for any organization to fire people just to optimize on the cost so we are investing heavily so while we are you know saving the cost on one side but then we are investing heavily on reskilling and upskilling these people right you know this is a time when everybody is at home and uh, you know we are investing into reskilling these people on the technologies which we believe you know are the are the next the digital technologies the analytics you know the robotics so we are training our people so that these people are available for us for the opportunities which are you know going to come to us in 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 uh, recent uh, thing we have taken some hard calls uh, deferring of the salary hikes bonuses uh, you know we are trying to convert some of the bonuses of the senior management into some referral payments kind of thing so these are some of those things which you know uh, we as an organization have taken and you know cutting down on the salaries or you know uh, you know firing people will be the last resort on our you know uh, plate right so we have to balance 
in 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 all the all the areas we have gone to our vendors you know we have negotiated uh, better rates with for us you know uh, we have also identified some of the redundant areas where we are incurring the cost right and uh, we have decided that you know we will put a hold on those things more important you know i think the pandemic and the lockdown has given us a savings in our travel and transport cost because we incur a lot of transport and travel cost what we have done is we have taken that money and we have invested heavily into the marketing right because the market digital marketing is the only way you know our sales team can now reach to our customers right you know because everybody is the physical interaction with the customers is no more there right so these are some of those initiatives which we have taken where we are trying to balance you know on optimization of the of the cost while somewhere we are bringing our cost down or deferring our cost but at the same time we are also investing uh, so that the business is agile and uh, you know the business continues to run thank you uh, so much manish for that uh, insight so i think what i gather from both shyam dev and manish is that organizations are looking at not just cost optimization but they're also looking at uh, channeling uh expenditure in the right direction what is right for today's environment uh vivek i want to come to you next you know so when we run this poll uh, just a, a couple of minutes ago when you're looking at intelligent spend management i think the first priority that people talked about is improving efficiencies right and both shyam dev and manish are talking about what they can do to be able to improve uh, efficiencies without making overt costs they're looking at what can be done best in this scenario where cost containment is certainly a priority but at the same time i want to optimize uh, the costs and improve efficiency so tell us a little bit about uh, you know how intelligent spend management allows companies to be uh, looking at their efficiencies a lot more um acutely sure sir so uh, before i start talking about intelligent spend management uh, probably let me take a step back and talk about intelligence intelligent enterprise architecture right so the first thing that's there in the bottom as a foundation is the digital platform it could be for data management and it could be on premise or a cloud platform on top of that is where we are using intelligent technologies and that could be machine learning that could be uh, partner ecosystems digital assistants uh, robotics that we spoke about on top of that there are three types of uh, there are three areas of spend one is how do we have a unified view of spend and the second piece is what are the multiple categories of spend that i need to manage and third is what are the multiple sources of spend that i need to manage and this where if you have to have an intelligent spend management will boil down to three critical aspects one do i have that single source of truth and visibility towards my spend whether it is multiple categories multiple sources number 2 do i have control do i have the right audit policies and compliance to ensure that i am able to manage and track whatever is happening third is all that i have done in terms of monitoring and control am i able to take intelligent decisions which is like mr manish was talking about which is going to impact my business where i can as a cfo i can go back to my ceo and showcase an impact in terms of business saving in terms of cost savings so that's in a nutshell when we talk about intelligent spend management from sap conquer standpoint more importantly like i said intelligent spend management on top of intelligent enterprise architecture i hope that answers yes yeah, sure uh, so vivek i think that takes me back to manish uh, saying that you know we've talked about gaining visibility improving efficiencies so tell us a little bit manish about you know how would you look at forecasting in these times because you know i know that when you and i had that conversation i think the monthly forecasting or the uh, quarterly forecasting is not relevant anymore because we don't know how the situation is going to pan out right so we take each day as it comes so in such a scenario how are you looking at reforecasting differing costs so any best practices that you think finance leaders should adopt at this point in time yes seema um seema i think um... Uh, i think one of the one of the top priority which has come is a process improvement in the poll also right you know and uh, when i look at a process improvement you know what the finance leader need is you know the fin- the fpna function should be turbocharged right you know this was this is this is a, a very different ball game right you know one one incidents or one news coming up which says that you know the airline industry is going for a toss right you know and you know if 30% of my revenue comes from an airline industry you know look at the way it impacts my my business right and you know i will not have that much of time or my management will not give that much of time to me to say okay take 10 days and come back 
and tell me you know how the business is looking at right so which means that you know the the the, the fpna function has to be upskilled it has to be you know supported not only by smart people but also by very smart and agile tools right you know which are very easy to use kind of thing for any layman kind of thing and we need to build you know you know i think in this scenario i'm sure all the cfos must be doing it we are actually building various scenarios right you know we have built a scenario which takes us to a 5% decline in our revenue to a 50% decline in our revenue right i would be i am having a spreadsheets which are having showing me you know 10 scenarios right and in those 10 scenarios you know what are those actions which i am going to take right you know trigger off right uh, as and when you know i am touching that particular scenario right and how that particular thing is going to help me right so this is one of the practice which we are following like you know you know we are all on whatsapp and all this thing you know the my sales team you know my business team you know if there is any any a small information which is relevant for us you know we get it and you know we try to build that and and see threshold is getting broken we all get quickly assemble into a meeting and then say okay what are the next steps which we have to do right so so that you know the best practices which everyone will have to follow uh, another important thing is like i think uh, the cash flow right you know i think uh, the most important thing which all we are talking is preserve and conserve cash right that is the that is the key to this entire uh, pandemic right now we have actually created a digital cash war room right which means that you know every penny coming and going is is being viewed right we have deferred all the cash flow decisions and all the decisions are currently being taken you know centralized by the by the cfo ceo and the ceo's team right you know so that you know we decide you know where to put the cash into a right area again you know technology needs is 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 helping us into into doing these things right most important thing is our receivables right you know earlier was the days when you know i used to review the receivable reports on a weekly basis or on a 15 days basis right because you know we we never had a scenario wherein we were you know running short of cash or you know our customers were not paying but now literally we are looking at it on a daily basis right i am looking at a daily basis we are also keeping our you know eyes open on what's happening in the industry right if i have a customer who is you know on a specific industry and that industry is going through a bad phase we have to take a call whether we should continue serving this customer or not serving this customer so i think you know this is basically we have not gone back to you know those days wherein every day is morning when you start the office you know what you look at is these reports right and these reports comes to us you know first thing in the morning and you know if there is no technology use which is there you can't get these reports right so so we are actually as of now our focus is while cost is important but let me tell you my time goes in seeing you know how is my cash getting used how is my cash getting conserved am i having sufficient working capital if things goes wrong can i run my organization for next 6 months right so those are the things which we are focusing on sure so that's that's really important and i think you know from the first part of the conversation we did get an understanding of what are the kind of insights that uh, you know cfos should start absorbing and start implementing so one was around cost optimization the other is around forecasting um so and then i want to come back to you next you know where you talk about how do you create uh, and communicate um, you know communicate rather to create a spend culture and accountability more importantly in these times right where you're saying that um, everything is now different right and uh, people who are going to drive those spends need to be completely accountable for what is getting spent because as an organization my priority is to be opt- is to be able to so optimize costs question completely differently okay uh, and uh, while i had kind words for vivek in the first part of the conversation now in the second part of the conversation i am going to be a pretty demanding customer i don't know <laughs> whether that demand is rational or irrational and I, i'll sure. tell you where i'm coming from first of all uh, i think uh, for all of the organizations uh, we will learn to live with the fact anything between a period of 3 to 6 months you can uh, run your business without any travel uh, and that's an accepted truth so going forward anybody would find it very difficult to justify his trip unless he has a sound reason the only exception are in two cases case number 1 if you are a sales guy so you cannot sit in your home and work from home that may not be the most efficient way and secondly is your meeting with external uh, agents uh, stakeholders outside the organization 
but any meeting which involves the internal stakeholders you will find it very difficult to justify why you need to travel physically rather than do it uh, remotely so that's i think the accountability part of it but having said that what as we uh, and we have long association with sap and other for that matter which i shared a, a while ago now our demand to sap will significantly go up i'll tell you where i'm coming from now uh, coming back on the accountability while uh, as i said the first part of the conversation that the employee is accountable to justify his trip i think as an employer we have certain accountability for the welfare of the employee if he or she has to travel and uh, so one of the basic i, I don't know there's a basic requirement or uh, that's a wish list uh, which is not cannot be fulfilled is uh, possibly things like when next time I, i if i have to take a trip and i would go to the sap conquer to book that trip my uh, expectation was i would like to know whether uh, the city where i'm traveling to what are the covid uh, restrictions or what are the norms uh, is it uh, i have to go for a quarantine if i reach there or uh, the hotel where i'm booked is it is in a quarantine zone and so on and so forth i know it's a it, it's a quite a nightmarish situation if i were sitting in vivek shoes uh, every day we know at least from a airlines perspective the rules are changing top of it uh, the covid rules across states vary sometimes they are not uh, consistent as well so uh, i don't know whether it's a tall wish list but i think that's the sort of accountability i would expect of the intelligent system going forward so vivek is that a, is that a possibility because i'm sure uh, shyam dev is sort of echoing uh, you know requests from across different sectors where there is extensive travel uh, for uh, their workforce absolutely i think first of all i would definitely want to highlight that it's not a wish list uh, it's not just a wish list it's it's definitely something that is possible and uh, definitely something that uh, sap conquer is doing for our clients even today uh, especially i think a classic example that uh, mr sandeep was talking about was the sales force imagine the sales force uh, they will still need to travel they will be on the on the field and and it doesn't have to be the sales force it could be anybody who's client facing external stakeholders facing and they would be on the field they would be traveling whether it's local transport ground transportation or their own vehicles that they will be using you will definitely need to ensure that even that spend is being controlled with the right tools with the right uh, you know uh, ability to you know ensure that you are able to track it second you are able to put in compliance and audit policies even for that and third you are able to make changes to the policies and you are able to see that this is how the spent spent category has shifted from what it was before and i think also we are very fortunate to be associated with so many partners whether you know you have the tmc partners that we work with or the other partners that we work with the technology partners in the travel and the expense category spend management category i think with this entire ecosystem like i said it's definitely not a wish list uh, we we definitely are already doing it for a lot of our clients and and we will continue to do it for a lot many uh, in in many many years so uh, that's interesting vivek that brings me to another question uh, saying that how are you engaging with your clients uh, given this whole pandemic and you know shyam dev is just given one example of travel and uh, how the demands are going to be very different from clients so along and intelligent spend management if you are to look at what are some of the changes that you have brought about uh, in your solution in your engagement with clients you know that sort of relate to the current environment absolutely so i'll probably put it into three buckets three categories uh, when we work with any any organization cfo uh, whether it's a professional services or whether it's a healthcare uh, life sciences uh, or manufacturing industry i think the cfo also would really want to see the end result in three categories right one what is definitely the process improvement and process process efficiency that i'm going to get because of this particular project second how is this going to ultimately help me in terms of roi that i can actually showcase to my management to my ceo that this is going to help me save so much of money and the third is adoption i don't want to invest in a project which is not being adopted by my employees which is not being used and consumed by my internal customers which are my employees so just to give you a classic examples in all the three categories i think when you look at process imagine uh, you know the recent example i'll take is an organization that we started working with and started implementing our project their process efficiency in terms of processing claims and processing invoices was ranging between 47 to 97 days the first thing that we did was bring this process efficiency down to 0 to 14 days 
so that's in in simple math it's one by third one third of the process time or process efficiency what they used to do before or probably 3x growth in terms of the process efficiency the second aspect we talk about is definitely with respect to tangible roi so imagine if we are able to give the visibility that we spoke about earlier in the presentation to a cfo which shows and that's why i was highlighting in terms of intelligence spend categories imagine a cfo has the visibility to 10 categories that are happening in his organization and out of which three categories could be for example conservatively 25% more than his peers and we are able to go back to the cfo and and highlight that saying even conservatively if we are going to probably help you save 5% of it not the entire 25% 5% of it even that would probably result in for example if i take the recent examples of uh, figures that we have saved ranges anywhere between 1.5 to 3 crore inr and the third example is adoption right so adoption whether it's an indian organization whether it's a global organization they do have multiple agendas from an adoption standpoint one organizations want to completely be carbon uh, free they don't want to have any carbon footprint they want to be 0% carbon emission no paper and they want to go paperless second they also want to ensure that their organization uh, you know not just the management starts adopting this particular solution it's also like uh, mr saimdeep was talking about it needs to be with the field force the people who are actually on the ground the people the employees of the organization have that employee experience and hence it's the the process and the project is not to make the life of the employee harder it's actually to make it easier and and hence the efficiency comes in the roi comes in and the adoption comes in. so these are few examples that i thought i'll highlight sure thanks uh, so much uh, vivek i want to go next to you vishal uh, where you can tell us a little bit about uh, you know technology and how that is sort of uh, enabling better uh, spend management for you as a cfo and uh, three big areas that i want you to talk a little bit about one is enhanced visibility the other is uh, compliance and uh, policy adherence and the third is really employee productivity so from these three angles how do you think uh, a tool or a technology for spend management is sort of impacting your function so that see now most of the points i found in vivek's uh, opening presentation uh, it did cover the 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 merits around the spend management and writing this topic further so i'll say uh, 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 we are hearing from the other panelists definitely this is a year where it, it will be more about survival and about more about cash conversation uh, conservation rather than growth and i think uh, in last three months what we have observed across organizations across the various cfo forums i have been it's more of digital enablement the higher use of uh, technology that is more uh, coming into the play and once we say digital then we are Uh, expectation is all, always around the output of it how do you analyze data how do you dissect bisect the data how do you how does it enable you in various decision making and that's the point i think uh, comes out around the spend also and one point i would always highlight is uh, i always say uh, never talk about uh, cost reduction or cost cutting because that's a negative sentence because it is never sustainable what is always relevant uh, in a cfo's world or any organization is the cost optimization because that is always a long term approach of building a business for a future delivery so coming back to my company i'll be more specific so uh, my company is a uh, uh, we are into medical devices sutures and this company has been acquired by apex uh, private equity around uh, one and a half years back and once the acquisition happened the entire leadership team like in, it happens in any private equity arm the entire leadership team uh, came on board uh, people who uh, left around mnc jobs and joined this company because the asset was highly uh, valuable and it has a it has the ability to uh, create value in future and when we had this uh, so we found because it was a indian company we found that there were a lot of uh, process gaps uh, which need to be plugged and that is how in last one and a half months uh, one and a half years i think we focused around sap hana roll out we focused around sap c4c the crm platform uh, for the field force because we have medical representatives who have to meet surgeons for selling sutures because sutures is our product and then we uh, focused around e sourcing we focused around integrating sap with the bank servers uh, we focused around uh, creating uh, logistic uh, efficiency and we also started focusing around the spend management so in last 12 months all these things have been uh, more focused towards uh, heightening high heightened activity there and if you will find most of the cases the common theme is sap 
and therefore sap for us has been uh, quite a platform wherein we have been quite active and in terms of spend management yes of course in last year april i think we as a management decided that we need to have a uh, spend management tool and because we all came from multinationals we have tested the school very successful really. that is where we rolled out this sap conquer in the, in the healthy and grow and i'll say if i have to count the three fold benefits one is definitely the fewer complaints number two is around more visibility into the expenses and third is i'll always uh, call out that it's a good strategic uh, drive to outsource your non core work into an automated process because then you don't have human intervention of receiving claims booking claims passing claims and communicating whether the claims have been processed for payment or not it's, so it's a fundamental approach of outsourcing your non core work and in terms of spend management when even as a uh, team we uh, why we did this we had three things in mind one was the visibility second was along the policy adherence and third was along the in the, in the, the analytics the intelligence out of the data which uh, vivek has also covered in his opening presentation so visibility if i have to speak earlier the expenses even in this entity were quite manual the expense claim process was manual they were piling up of claims and that was impacting the provisioning the data entry time was uh, consuming and there was definitely a move there a desire need to move to spend based platform like conquer once we rolled out from the company side if i have to speak there was more visibility as in when the expenses were occurring there was a better accountability which was coming up and hence it solved the struggle around provisioning we could see what, when people are submitting reports how much is the spend where are they spending uh, and it was easy to find who are in the employees who are not submitting claims because then it's a hygiene issue and then we also found that there were no duplicate uh, payments which were being found there was a improved uh, accuracy there was greater visibility of the spends and there was also reduced time effort of my field force the sales force in doing uh, manual data entry and this all i'll say uh, brought greater control over the also the cost center wise budgets because being the uh, it was backwardly integrated with sap therefore an sap and conquer both have the common cost centers that is how it helped enable tracking your spend against the budgets and uh, over a period of time we also uh, we also started uh, issuing corporate cards and they were linked to the conquer uh, payments and that is how it was enabling uh, the The, the tracking of card spends uh, vis-a-vis the concert expenses and concert was integrated with SAP, so that enabled the the, the bad booking of the expenses also into SAP without any human intervention. And further, we further enlarged the concert scope by uh, bringing in the travel booking also, integrating Yatra with uh, uh, with concert because they uh, are concert already had a partnership with Yatra, and this also enabled your uh, indenting of your travel request through Yatra in concert. and once your travel is completed then the employee logs in scans the payment uh, scans the voucher books is uh, claim expense and that gets back uh, backward integration to sap uh, creating a complete seamless process and from the employee side i'll say that the submitting expenses became online they could now find out what is the status of expense claims while they are in the field whether it is approved whether the whether it is in the process of being paid whether the payments have been released or not so all these information were quite handy to the employees and also the managers found it quite easy to approve while the employee was traveling and the best part is concur as a tool can be operated whether it is from mobile laptop or tablet because your sales guys when they are in the field they should have easy access to keep clear uh, submitting their claims while they are traveling so and the number of entries also which they have to do in conquer reduce quite a lot and this save their time which they can otherwise use for the more productive work of doing their sales work so this was largely the uh, i'll say a live experience around the visibility on the policy adherence the good piece in conquer is the entire hr policy when you start uh, operating the tool you have to upload your hr policies and therefore once the hr policy is there every by exception what every employee when he submitting the claim there is a automated control so there will not be cases wherein he is claiming higher and by mistake it gets passed so the hr policy itself takes care of a person's job of not requiring to do scrutiny of the bills rather the bills get passed basis the policies what the company has defined and uh, and because you are scanning the vouchers the digitization is also helping later on in the audit trails and there that is how your uh, compliance checks are there later on your audit also gets quite seamless and easy rather than we scribbling around there like in these covid times when the entire audit was handled remotely you would have never thought of uh, sitting in office and 
uh, sharing the expense vouchers with the auditors. Now the auditors can also have access to the various uh, digitized records which are there on the tool. And the third thing I'll call is around the analytics. Uh, so you, we can have easy analytics of geography-wise expenses versus the sales. What is the spent productivity? And all these analytics are definitely required to take the procurement decisions. For example, uh, just to quote a live example, basis the spent analytics which we did in the first three months. We could find out where is the which hotels are there wherein the field is spending uh, most of their travel time when they are traveling. And that enabled us uh, to negotiate with these hotels back for a better rebates or a better discount because we were we could know how much volumes is going and then as a corporate we could negotiate with those hotel chain across the country to derive a better rate. So in short, uh, the visibility definitely helps the policy adherence ensures compliance and the analytics helps you to have a sustained uh, cost optimizing approach in the future. And the last piece I'll always say, even when we implemented cost, we have never looked around the cost because the entire focus was around the, the policy adherence and the process improvement because uh, the yearly cost of conquer that gets self filled by the savings which you generate. Thanks so much, Vishal. Uh, Om Prakash, I want to come to you next. Uh, you know, this is a, a generic uh, question to you and this is because you engage with so many clients on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, when we had done our dipstick with CFOs, almost about 75 to 80 percent CFOs said that they're not cutting back on their investments or planned investments in technology. So is that what you're hearing from uh, your clients as well, client CFOs as well? Are they looking at investing uh, or continue to invest in new technologies? Yeah, absolutely, Seema. I think first of all, thanks for giving us the opportunity to enter the CFO team and the SAP contact team as well. Yeah, absolutely. You are rightly said. I think what we could see in multiple uh, uh, organization, like the most priority for the CFOs are like I think on on the concern the current situation as well, right? Uh, how do I do where where will I spend, right? And again, how technology can help on this, right? On, on our, our, I think uh, Vivek and Manish and already spoke about uh, technologies, how technologies are helping them in terms of uh, various spend management or cost efficiency and also and also on the process improvement or process efficiency. So we have seen in multiple uh, customer places where they are leveraging the uh, technology friend, right? Technology friend to to uh, uh, what kind of insightful uh, dashboards or reports can I will get to adhere to my policies or to my auditing uh, requirement, right? Yeah, we are hearing the same thing from various customer places on what how technology can help me to achieve all these things as a CFO because uh, I have a very stringent uh, budget or whatever I have in the future, right? Definitely uh, technology has to support me in this front, right? In terms of uh, empowering my employees or in terms of sales services or, or moving further, is everything going to be digital? As and when I travel, I may have to, I may not have any any paper invoices or I may not have any kind of, uh, any, any kind of uh, contactless uh, any transactions right how technology can help me out of all these things to track all these uh, expenses and how i can adhere to my budget or audit purpose that's the main focus of uh, every cfo these days to optimize uh, all my cost so that it helped me to spend at the right uh, track that's a very, uh, very important part to where I spend this money. That's a very interesting insight. So I think with that, we come to the end of this discussion. Before we move into uh, the next part, which is the q and I wanted to sort of take a quick poll. Our last poll for the day uh, coming up. You have about 30 seconds. Can you please uh, key in your responses quickly? I think that was that was a very interesting discussion. We got, uh, you know, different perspectives from uh, all you CFOs, each one talking about the specific challenges that were impacting uh, their businesses. They also talked about, uh, you know, what are some of the measures that they are undertaking to be able to optimize on costs and uh, also um, review their cost levers from time to time and take the necessary course correction because all of you would know, um, you know, the the challenges with respect to business, uh, with respect to growth is, is for here to stay for a little while more. So I think you will have to uh, have and you know develop a comprehensive arsenal of cost management options to be, to be able to allow yourself and to be prepared to make the decisions thoughtfully, strategically and 
moreover in close alignment with the business realities because i think that's what is required you know how easily or how quickly can you respond uh, to the business reality is what uh what will determine the success of an organization and i think all of you are taking the right kind of measures to be able to respond quickly um uh, to uh, to the new normal so thank you everyone for a wonderful interaction thank you all for your insights and uh, we hope the audience would find value in today's discussion please feel free to write back to us with any of your questions and queries and i can channelize it to to our uh, experts uh in in today's uh, panel discussion so thank you everyone and we hope to see you uh with another interesting session soon thank you